parole by legal right vested in it and with approval by the governor has granted you a parole. Now any violation will cause you to be brought back and serve the remaining six years of your term. You will report immediately to the place to which you have been paroled. And within 24 hours you will report your arrival to the parole officer. Is that all clearly understood? Yes, sir. I had three years to memorize it. I couldn't forget it. Keeping all these rules won't give me much chance to prove my innocence. I'm afraid you can't get any sympathy on that point. In all my experience, I have never bumped into the case of convicting an innocent. I'm still waiting for the first one. If I get a fair break, you'll take back those words, Warden. My boy, nothing would give me greater pleasure. Good luck to you, Tyler. Thank you, sir. I'm looking for Mr. Bennett, the parole officer. That's me. Good morning, I'm Dave Tyler. Oh, I've been expecting you. Sit down. Thanks. Well, Tyler, my first duty was to instruct you regarding your parole restrictions. You're not to change your residence or employment without my consent. You're not to associate with persons having a criminal record. You're not to use intoxicating liquor and particularly not to have in your possession any guns. You're not to marry without the permission of your parole officer. You'll report to me weekly, and I will visit your place of employment and residence when I see fit. Now, is that all clearly understood? I know all the rules backwards. For the next six years, no bad companions, no liquor, no guns, no late hours, no marriage. The question of marriage is not quite that severe. You are permitted to marry during your parole, provided we approve the lady and she's aware of your circumstances. That practically kills my chances with the right girl. Wouldn't it be rather humiliating to ask a lady to appear here for your approval? You'd be surprised what the right girl would do. I'll wait until I can prove I'm not guilty. Well, you might make some girl believe that. You have to carry this card with you at all times. It'll require your signature. In other words, I must carry a card to identify myself as a criminal. If you're picked up by the police, that'll prove you're legally out of prison. Yeah, and brands me as a suspect for every crime in the neighborhood. Try to get the bitterness out of your system, Tyler. You should be grateful to be on parole and have a job with a respectable man like Gregory Warren. Well, I am grateful to Mr. Warren and anyone else who believes in me. I need all the friends I can get to help me prove my innocence. Tyler, you've had your hearing in court. They passed judgment on your guilt. What you'd better do is pay strict attention to your parole conditions. Remember, you're not a free man. Your parole is another way of serving the remaining six years of your term. Mrs. Magruder. So the sign outside, have you any vacancies? I got one room. Can I see it? Yes. I don't think you'll like it, but you can look at it. The last man that was here, he didn't like it. I don't know how you ever found this place. Well, if you don't expect too much, you won't be disappointed. It's got windows and a bed. What more does a person want than that? You're too modest, Mrs. Magruder. Well, it's got a floor. And walls. Curtains on the windows. Well, it's even got chairs with backs on them. And can you beat it? It's got a ceiling. Never mind the cracks. No, I won't. Uh, as long as the rain doesn't come through them. Well, make up your mind. Do you want this? I'll make up my mind while you make up the bed. Uh. Say, uh, doesn't the sun ever come in here? Sun? Huh. Some people want the earth for three dollars a week. You want the sun. Okay, skip the sun. I'll get along without that. Look here, young man. You got references. No. Have you? Have you got a job? Starting a new one, reporting tomorrow. How are you on keeping jobs? Well, I was at the last one for over three years. 
just wouldn't let me go. Who are you working for? Gregory Warren and Company Investments. Uh, well, here's your key. I don't want to be bothered much for a measly three dollars a week. So if you want anything, don't call me. We ain't got it. Thanks. Uh, by the way, if uh, you want the rent right away, don't ask me. I haven't got it. I ain't surprised. Hello, Jeff. Dave! Gee, fella, I can't believe it's you. Gosh, it's good to see you. Jeff, you don't know how grateful I am to you for helping me get paroled. Well, I've been scheming that article ever since your trial, but I couldn't print it till you were up for parole, see? You had it figured out to a T. Well, half a dozen people wrote in offering me jobs. Yeah? Which one they give you? A fellow by the name of Gregory Warren runs an investment company. Gregory Warren? Well, good, I know him. Hey, come on, sit down. Well, that job ought to be all right for you. It's up to me to make it all right. But they'll forget I'm a jailbird. Well, you watch your step and people forget in no time. And you forget it, too. I'll watch my step, and I'm not going to forget. Well, you will in time, Dave. Say, come on out to my place. Gee, it'll be like old times, us rooming together again. No, thanks, Jeff. I've got a place. But there's plenty of room. No. You've done enough already. I can't drag a mess of parole rules into your home. Why, they'd be questioning you all the time. I'm sort of an outcast, you know. Well, not with me. Thanks, Jeff. Say, uh, you <laughs> need a little cash? Uh, very little, but it's all yours, Dave. You know that. Ah, get along. Thanks for believing I'm not guilty, Jeff. Well, what else could I do? I was in trouble and needed help. Then you think I am guilty. You've thought it right along. Yet you did all you could to help me out. Well, maybe I didn't give it much thought. But, Jeff, I tell you, I'm innocent. Dave, you had a good lawyer and a fair trial. And six witnesses swore they saw you drive away from that bank. But I wasn't anywhere near that bank. I didn't have anything to do with the robbery. Well, let's forget about it. Forget it? After three years up there? After three years of being herded around with a bunch of criminals and charged with a crime I didn't do? Well, I can't forget that. I tell you, I'm innocent. Every one of those six witnesses lied when they testified against me. Somebody framed me beautifully. Well, I'm sorry, Dave. I heard those witnesses and they certainly convinced me. It helped a lot if I thought you believed me, Jeff. Oh, gosh, I guess they even had me fooled. And you do believe me? Yes, Dave, I do, now. I don't know why I ever believed anything else. Thanks, Jeff. I needed that from you. Three years for something he didn't do. He'll be coming out of there with fire in his eye, looking for the guy that really pulled that bank job. That job was nicely tied to him for the rest of his life. Yeah, you hope. It's a good thing for you that six witnesses saw him running away from that robbery. Yeah, six witnesses. Made to your order. And they saved your hide by sending him to jail instead of you. Yeah, that was a nice hunk of dough you cleaned up when they took Tyler out of that football game. Oh, I'd like to get my hands on another setup like that. Mr. Warren in? He'll get on to us in a week and blow all our rackets wide open. Suppose he starts taking up those witnesses. In that case, I'll turn him over as a parole violator and he'll go back to state's prison for the other six years. Mr. Warren? Yes? Why, you're Whiz Tyler. Not any longer. I'm Dave Tyler. Welcome, Dave Tyler. I'm glad to see you. I hope you'll always be able to say that. This is Mr. Russell. He's a close associate of mine, sort of silent partner. How do you do, Mr. Russell? How are you? Incidentally, Russell knows the circumstances of your being here. I was hoping the newspapers wouldn't blast that too much. Yes, I use my influence to pipe that down. Oh, well, that's a break. Yeah, I figured there'd be handicaps enough without that. Yeah, the parole board pile them on thick. I <laughs> have to report on everything but my old razor blade. <laughs> Cigarette? No, thanks. Uh, Mr. Warren, 
I'd like to tell you how grateful I am for giving me this job. Why, not at all. I'm only repaying you for all you've done for me. I've always greatly admired your courage as a football player. You're one of the few that remembered. <laughs> well, shall we start things off with a little celebration? Would you like a drink? Uh, the parole board says thumbs down on that. Oh, that's a parole violation, isn't it? They're afraid you might stub your toe again. Mr. Warren, I never stubbed my toe in the first place. That charge against me was all wrong. I never robbed any bank. I'd like you to believe that. Well, it, it really doesn't make any difference to me. My interest is entirely in your football record. Now, this is for you, Mr. Warren. It's your little sister. Oh. Hello, Freckles. Enjoying your visit? Get you what? A doghouse? Oh, a dollhouse! No, no, I won't forget. I'll have the show for bite. And make sure you're ready. I want you home before dark. Yes, I'll see you at dinner. Yeah, I'll be waiting. Goodbye, Freckles. It was my kid sister. She's visiting up at Galeville. Well, gentlemen, we have important work to do. Someone has to buy a dollhouse. She wants the car to bring it up. I'll do the best I can. Not you. You're not cut out for that sort of work. Can you drive a car? That's what they said I was doing at that bank stick-up. Well, <clears throat> this will be your first job. You're to buy a dollhouse and drive to Galeville. Here's the address. Pick up my kid sister and drop her off at my house. And where's your house? She'll tell you, but don't let her tell you how to drive. Drive carefully and avoid accidents when you're with her. You realize I don't dare drive without a license. And in order to get that, I have to see my parole officer. Well, I'll have to meet your parole officer sooner or later. It may as well be now. Come on, let's go. I'll pick you up later. I'm looking for a freckles. I was supposed to give her this. Oh, let me see it. Well, that's just the kind I wanted. Did you buy it? Yes. Mr. Warren said it was for uh, freckles. That's right. I'm freckles. You freckles? Oh, I see. You expected to see a little girl. Naturally. He mentioned freckles and then wanting a dollhouse. Well, let's clear up the freckles right now. They disappeared a long time ago, but my brother never forgot them. And the dollhouse I wanted for a little girl who lives here. Oh, your car is here. And the dollhouse. My bag is just inside. What a beauty. Oh, Gloria will love that. Do me a favor, Elaine. Don't let her see it until her birthday. I won't. Goodbye, dear. I'll be looking for your visit this week. You let me know the day and I'll drive up for you. So would I if I had that good-looking driver. Never mind coming along. Just send him. Give my love to Greg. You bet I will. You're not a real chauffeur. That's right. How can you tell? Well, a regular chauffeur would have put the bag in front, where it belongs. Sorry, I'll change it. Uh, no, don't. It gets awfully lonesome in that back seat. It's just like being cooped up in a cage. Oh, uh, do you mind if I sit up in front with you? It's a lot more fun than being alone. I don't like being alone either, Miss Warren. I'll just slide through here. 